Good morning, this is Sharon Wilcox from the Benson First Baptist Church in Benson, Arizona. And um, we are going to have a little devotion today for you on the power of God. And boy, we sure do need his power today, don't we? I'm going to start out with a little simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I just pray that you would help our nation today and the people everywhere that are so frightened. And we really don't need to be frightened. God has everything under control. We just need to know the God in heaven. And it's so simple to um, have him in your heart and life. You just need to go with him uh, on your knees to God and ask for forgiveness and ask for help. And just like that, comes into your heart. So I'd like to start out with Ephesians 1 verses 19 through 23. And this is a prayer that is written by Paul the Apostle. And it's a prayer for spiritual wisdom. Okay, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. He is far above any ruler or authority, power, leader, or anything else, not only in this world, but also the world to come. God has put everything under his authority. Uh, of Christ and he has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church and the church is his body that's us the Christians in the world we are the church is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself our pastor has written a book and um, it's called stepping forward and that's what we sure need today, right? To step forward. And he uh, gives us an insight, and I'm going to follow his outline uh, as much as I possibly can. The Apostle Paul finalizes his prayer to God by asking that the saints might know the power of God. The Apostle understood that knowing the power of God can cause a Christian to live life at its fullest. How many of us try to do things in our own power? Well, how does that work for you? You usually fail. I'm not saying that, that people cannot accomplish great things because a lot of unsaved people do accomplish great things. But there's always that feeling, that void, that things are not 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 fulfilled and they search and they search and they go on from one thing to the other and the other as I did before I found Christ and now I realize that my completeness and fullness is in him so we fight we fight we fight we can be sure that we're in the flesh when we do that and not in the spirit where the power of God is manifested in our life. God's power in our life is very vital to living a life victorious. So we need to draw on it, we need to walk in it, and I'll go on to explain why we need to do that. The first reason that is it's rel relatively obvious in and of ourselves we are very weak individuals. Um, it's a sobering reality. Being my age, I realize it all the more. Our sin nature dominates our life to a point that it can destroy us. Many people commit suicide because they just don't know where to turn. God is the answer. That power is the answer. That's why we need to rely upon and live within this very power of God every day. That same power that resurrected our Lord and Savior is the same exact power 
that the Holy Spirit possesses within this heart, this temple of God. He just sits there and he waits so that we listen a little careful to the Spirit in the way in which we should go. He speaks very softly, so we really have to pay attention. The second reason we need to live in God's power is because we have a real obvious enemy lurking around, trying to destroy our happiness, our joy, and our hope. Do we not sense that now, people? All we have to do is turn on the TV and see all the violence and all the unrest in our world today. It's sad, sad. Not only do we have this sin nature that's trying to take master over us again, but we have that enemy that just prowls around waiting to us to let down our guard so that he can put doubt and fear in our lives. And oh, there's so much of that today. They, and these little demons that are around us everywhere, they want to take away the power that is God's in our life. When we stand in the power of God and we listen to his Holy Spirit and accept that resurrection power, we place ourselves in a position um, where the enemy can't reach us. When the power of God replaces that weak, feeble, and puny strength, our joy and our hope and our peace stays right where it belongs in the center of God's will. So it's only in the power of God that we stand out, stand outside of it. We're going to be jumped and beaten by that sly old hunter who has one purpose, but to steal our joy, to kill our joy, and destroy our peace and, and help from God. So I give you this challenge today. Each of us must face the reality of our own strength. We really do not have what it takes to walk triumphantly and stand against an enemy who has hunted people for a very, very long time. Today is a great day to let God know that we don't have what it takes, that our strength is really a false sense of reality, and that in our own power, we will continue to fail and fall. The moment that we mention this to God, we should also let him know that we want to walk in his mighty resurrection power. Ask him to help you to listen to the Holy Spirit within and to quickly rely on that power. We could sure enjoy life a whole lot more if we admit our weaknesses and humbly rest upon God's amazing resurrection power. May the Lord bless you today and just turn to him. I pray so often for a world, my family, my friends, my neighbors, my loved ones, and I so desire to see them all saved and on their way to heaven. We're all going to die. That's inevitable. Where are you going to spend eternity? So in reflection of what was said today, what is God saying to you right now? And how can I respond? Are we going to say yes to Jesus? Or are we going to turn to the world and all of its unrest? May God bless you. I love you. And Jesus loves you.